Hi there. Well, on the bench today we've got a Pioneer turntable. Probably from the late 80s, early 90s, something like that. Nothing special, but it was uh, fairly good in its time, I guess. And it belongs to a friend, and he wants me to convert it to a Bluetooth transmitter. In other words, so it you can connect to it via Bluetooth. Now, there's various problems in doing this. Um, for one thing, the signal that comes out the pickup is very low level, just a few millivolts. As you'd expect, it's a moving magnet pickup, no impedance, whatever. So, you, first of all, you've got to amplify it. Um, and I bought this amplifier, yeah, I'll show you this, off eBay for about £15, I think it was. And it basically takes in uh, phono input and it gives you a line level output. And it's not much in it really, just a little simple circuit board. And it's supposed to run on 9 volts, 9 volt battery, or you can plug a power supply into it. Um, but uh, I intend to run this entire project on 5 volts if I can get away with it. And because the Bluetooth module is a 5 volt module, actually it's 3.3 .3 to 5 volts specification. So um, I've tried this uh, little preamplifier connected it up to the record deck and it works fine on 9 volts it also works fine on 5 volts so that's okay any lower than 5 it doesn't like it at all which is not surprising and what it, what amazed me was I was monitoring the voltage and the current on my power supply I was getting no reading whatsoever on the uh, current meter so I put a meter in series a more uh, sensitive meter in series and it was only drawing 900 microamps but what the hell, I don't care what it draws that's not the point, I just want it to work and uh, so that bit's ok, I should take it out of its box because it'll have to fit in the bottom of this uh, turntable and that's another problem which I'll come on to later so anyway, I've also, I have also ordered the Bluetooth module back in, well, about two weeks ago and the only place of course I could find it was on eBay from China and this is the tiny little module and it is absolutely minute sorry about the crap camera work as usual so you can see how tiny it is and it's got all the connections along the side you've got um, you've got um, uh, just hang on a minute I'll get the uh, circuit diagram right here's the um, circuit diagram which was on the listing listing on eBay how you connect it all up and um, there's a little tiny module which cost enormous amount of money it cost me all of four dollars I think <laughs> um, which is amazing really how they do it for the price I don't know but um, you've got various connections you can have on here it obviously it needs five volts here or it will go from 3.3 .3 to five volts and um, You've got a LED which uh, lights up when you're connecting to the Bluetooth device and the connect button which I presume you press to connect to your device which I think will, in this case, will be a mobile phone. I'll have to use my mobile phone to connect it to, to start with. Um, and um, I never, I've never really played with Bluetooth before so how successful this project's going to be I don't know. And you've got your line level audio coming in there, stereo input. It's also got other connections for um, receive, transmit, that's something to do with digital, whatever, I don't understand all that rubbish. It makes no sense to me at all. And various other things which have no interest whatsoever. It's also got analog ground and a main power supply ground and they're going to have to be connected together but I don't know if that would be a problem but I'll find out later. And that's about it really. I think for ease of um, connection to this thing, if I zoom in on it, I'm going to have to mount it on a uh, piece of copper circuit board because there's no other way I'm going to keep it stable 
and um, whatever, you know, it's going to be pretty hard. And to power it all, I uh, have decided to use a mobile phone charger, an old mobile phone charger, which you see here. And it is, I don't know how old it is, it's come out of an old charger. I ripped the plastic case open and it's um, almost ideal really for the job. Uh, it's obviously switch mode but uh, it looks in fairly good condition still. It's not going to have a hard life in this project. It's only going to deliver a few milliamps of, of current. But uh, when measuring it, it actually produces 5.5 volts which is a little bit on the high side for the Bluetooth module. So I'm going to have to check this module. I'm going to connect it up to a variable power supply and gradually increase the voltage. And if it signs, shows signs of getting unhappy, then I'll, um, I'll just stick a diode in series with the, uh, the, uh, the power supply. And that'll drop it down by half a volt, down to five volts, roughly. So that's the plan. But there's a big, there's a slight problem with this uh, turntable, which I'll show you next. Right, here's the underside of the turntable. Now, most turntables I've been used to are just a plastic construction. Certainly mine is. Not a particularly high-end turntable, but works okay for me. But this one is built out of solid, one and a half inch, I reckon, chipboard. And they've just... Um, milled out the areas where they needed to so it doesn't give me a lot of space to get components mounted or boards mounted I think it, it may be a slight struggle to do this project but I think I'm probably capable the power supply I may try and stuff under there somewhere um, near the mains input that's the mains input if I stick the power supply under there and try and get the wires around it somehow and as I said this uh, preamp board I shall remove out of there and maybe stick it in that bit there I don't know where I'm going to stick it um, screw it onto the sides of the chipboard and as for the Bluetooth module I'm going to stick that on a piece of copper circuit board and that can go anywhere really it's so tiny um, but uh, I think you know, the next stage in this project is to get this little Bluetooth module uh, wired up on a piece of circuit board and just test it and get get more familiar with it, make friends with it, whatever. Try and get it to do what it's supposed to do. Because I, as I said, I've never played with Bluetooth before. It doesn't interest me, Bluetooth. Um, I prefer analog stuff to uh, digital, whatever. But that's what I'm going to do next, I think. Shove the turntable out of the way, get this mounted up on a piece of copper circuit board and connect all the uh, various components up to it that it needs, like the uh, connect button and the LED and the audio inputs. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, this is my little mock-up circuit. I know it looks horrible, but of course it won't look like that when I finish the uh, proper... Um, construction of it. I've got the Bluetooth module there, I've got 10 microfarad decoupling as they recommend and that just happened to be there anyway, that's a point 0.1 so I left that in place and I've got my LED which is going to display my, uh, don't know what it's going to display it's probably going to flash until it goes solid red or something and what else we got, the 330 ohm for the LED and we've got our connect button push button and I've got three wires here which are hard to see because they're very thin and there's left input audio and left right input audio and audio ground and I've got a signal generator ready on this red lead to connect with this 400 hertz signal. So now I'm going to um, turn it on. I've got it on power supply set to 5 volts. And oh, that's interesting. I've got two LEDs flashing. That's a bit of a, a bonus, I suppose. 
and it's drawing, let's have a look at the power supply it's drawing 30 milliamps ok let's see if we can uh, blow it up now let's see if we can blow it up let's see if we can manage to get it to go up to uh, 5.5 5. without dying yes it goes up to 5.5 5 without dying it's drawing 31 milliamps so that's fine, I'll run on the power supply so the next thing I have to do I guess is go and get my phone and see if I can connect to my phone ok I've got my phone on and uh, I turn the bluetooth on and then it says scanning so I press the connect button and it does nothing at all no bluetooth device is found scan right let's try pressing it I don't know I don't even know what I'm doing really no Bluetooth device is found wonderful hi there again so here we are over a week later probably and having talked to my friend who I'm doing this project for we both come to the conclusion that you can't use your phone as a Bluetooth speaker, it's just a transmitter it expects to connect to a Bluetooth device or play audio through a Bluetooth speaker so he's brought me over a, a Bluetooth speaker because I don't have one and this one is what I've got now first problem with this was the charging socket was loose and not charging so having gone to all the hassle of taking this thing apart which wasn't easy I find that the little, the little USB socket was completely ripped off the board and all the pads had been ripped off as well so there was no hope of, of re recovering that situation but I did manage to connect a, uh, a positive wire onto where the original 5 volts would have been that was the uh, charging input from the USB and I got a negative as well obviously and success I managed to charge it up with uh, 5 volts so there you go that is just about working and at some point I might have to bodge a proper socket in there somehow if we ever go that far but that's as I said it's not going to be used with this actual speaker when I finish this project it's for his sister who's got a Bluetooth speaker anyway so now I think I've achieved success I've managed to get the Bluetooth speaker to connect to this and the flashing pattern of the LEDs has changed and I've got my 400 Hz signal still and I've got my two stereo inputs and if I touch it on there it's extremely loud almost to distortion and the other channel if I do that one is nowhere near as loud which concerns me very slightly but not enormously because when I tested this Bluetooth speaker with my uh, phone connected it up to my phone and played some music through it I did notice that one of the channels was a lot lower than the other one so I'm assuming it's the uh, the speaker that's got the uh, problem and I don't have any instructions for it I've just had to follow what he told me so I don't think it's got a balance control but it might have who knows but I haven't found one all, I know, all I've got is this um, dial which changes the volume and you also push it to make it do various things like turn on and off and go into connect mode and I managed to do all that okay but I don't think it's got balance but it might have who knows but the conclusion is the project works in theory 
Now what I've got to do is I've got to get this all this crap disconnected um, and get this little tiny board mounted on a piece of pre printer circuit board where it'll be more happy and stable because I can't shove it in the uh, record player as it is and wire up to it. The connection points are just too fine so I'm going to mount it in on a piece of copper circuit board and have some standoffs which I'll probably use low value capacitors surface mount capacitors on their ends and they can be standoffs to connect the very fine wires to and then I can connect proper wires to that point as well so that's my next stage is to um, cut a piece of circuit board out and get that all mounted up and retest it before I actually install it all and wire it up so that's what I'll do next so bye for now so here's what I've uh, achieved I've uh, stuck it down with double sided tape onto this piece of printer circuit board and uh, because the pads on the actual board are so tiny I decided to uh, use bigger pads on here to connect wires to so that's a much better solution I mean it's not the most prettiest circuit board ever made but as long as it does the job that's the main problem over with anyway that's the decoupling capacitor there and there's a tiny little 330 ohm surface mount resistor which feeds the LED which is just the same as that LED which is flashing blue and what else can I say about it? It's all working. Oh yeah, I made a fatal error. I went and mounted this on a... That's the aerial for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz or whatever the hell it is. Bluetooth signal. And of course it's screened, isn't it, by this um, piece of copper board. And I was only getting about a couple of feet range on it. So I've, I've uh, connected up a nasty piece of blue wire to it. And now it works for about... Uh, 10 feet, 15 feet, which is, should be okay. And the final test with some audio. So that's working fine. Now I've just got to install the thing in the uh, record deck. So I will go and do that next. Okay, this is the underside with everything installed. And a hell of a bloody difficult job it was getting it all in there. I'd be absolutely amazed if it works. I haven't plugged it in yet. I'm almost frightened too. So you've got a power supply board over there, which produces 5.4 volts. And then the little Bluetooth board under that mess of wires. And over there, that blue wire is the Bluetooth aerial. I had to connect up to it. And as we go around, we've got underneath that metal can there is the connections to the uh, pickup arm and uh, that goes via a uh, screened wire down there into the input of the uh, preamble which I've had to hot glue in which is unfortunate I wanted to try and make a little metal bracket and solder that onto the circuit board but the circuit board material is so poor it's um, Paxilin or whatever the hell that stuff is you put any sort of heat on the uh, track at all and they just come off the board so I had to give up on that idea and use hot glue to glue it in and then we've got all various wires for the uh, LED and to the left of that is the connect button which I've not had to use yet but anyway it's there for whatever my main worry is um, all this stuff, all this wiring and noise that it might produce being picked up um, being so close to the uh, connections for the pickup on but I guess we'll have to just plug it in and see what happens so that's what I'm going to do next well initially it didn't do bloody bloody thing when I discovered um, the DC in jack was not letting the power go through so I wired straight on Oh, after that. Now it's buzzing like a, I don't know what, a buzzy thing. Like a bloody bumblebee. But, I think it's got some hope. Because, if I connect an earth onto the circuit board, it stops buzzing. 
well, almost. Almost starts buzzing. So obviously it needs the mains earth onto the uh, negative. And this bloody circuit board is absolute crap. If I wiggle that, wiggle that, wiggle, 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 the circuit board's falling apart. So I have to redo that and get an earth on it. And that stopped the bloody thing buzzing. I put an earth wire from the mains earth onto the uh, Bluetooth negative whatever board. So I think I can turn it upside down or right side up and stick a record on it. And I'll be amazed I'll still be amazed if it works. Here we go. Now as usual, because of bloody YouTube's copyright, I can't play much of this. But this is Ian Jury, New Boots and Panthers from 1977 I believe. I'll just play a few seconds. I think that proves it works and I'm absolutely amazed that it actually works. So I think that is the end of the video. I've just got to tidy it all up. Put the uh, hardboard panel back on and fill it up with hot glue before it falls to pieces. So bye for now.